discuss this further, I'm joined by Amy Langland. Now, Amy Langland is from My Life, My Story. It's a charity that deals with uh, youth political engagement and something we don't often talk about when it comes to Brexit is the youth vote. I spoke there a number of options possibly on the table for a plan B. From, from the young people perspective, the youth, what would they like to see happen next? What they would like to see happen next, Sarah, is quite frankly for them to be actually listened to and have a meaningful input into what's going on. What you just said there is that we don't talk about the youth when it comes to Brexit and we will live with the outcome the longest. So regardless of what happens next, the uncertainty around what is going on needs to be, you know, Theresa needs to move forward and something has to happen because at the moment, young people feel incredibly sidelined. They feel as though the whole debate is being dominated by the Westminster elite. And quite frankly, what needs to happen now is that, you know, the Prime Minister needs to get on, there needs to be a solution, and we need to find out what's going on. The problem is, no one seems to know. And in all of this confusion and chaos and the circus that is happening, young people's voices are being completely naturally overlooked. You canvass young people what they're thinking, particularly at the moment about Brexit. A no-deal Brexit, that's one of the options. A second referendum, that's one of the options. Is there anything young people seem to want more or definitely know they don't want? Young people definitely don't want a no-deal Brexit. That will completely and utterly ruin their future job prospects and opportunities. And in fact, you know, a lot of young people, you know, some want a second referendum, some don't. But ultimately, they really just want the Prime Minister to reach across, move past this party toing and froing, reach across and actually say, let's work together for the future of this country, for future generations, and actually figure out something that works for everyone and stop all of this you know, kind of toing and froing, you know, for the sake of the youth. Is there frustration? I mean, if you look behind you here now, there are possibly hundreds of people today who are campaigning. This country is really divided. We've got the pro-European, we've got the pro-Brexit side. It's starting to get nasty in some places as, as this Brexit debate, debate really divides people. Are you finding that frustration or division within young people when it comes to Brexit? Absolutely. I mean, our, our most recent report found that there were huge divisions, like young versus old, um, rural and urban dwellers and kind of graduates, non-graduates. There's so many divisions in this country. And no matter what happens with Brexit now, we really need to work together as a nation to reunite these divides for the sake of future generations. Amy Langland, Longland, thank you very much for that. So clearly, the youth just as frustrated, perhaps, as other people here in the UK who want something to happen with Brexit, and they fear again today might just be another day where nothing is sorted out. And we will, of course, be covering it all live here on TRT World well, for the moment. Sarah, thank you very much indeed for that. Still to come here on the programme, Palestine wants full membership in the UN, but Israel gears up to prevent that from happening.